Hi guys, I want to talk to you today about balancing chemical equations. My guess is you've done this before, maybe back in middle school, but just want to make sure that you do have an idea of what is necessary for balancing an equation. So let's start out with this one, this first one I have right here that says a piece of lithium is put into a solution of aluminum chloride and a reaction occurs. The product is a solution of lithium chloride and solid aluminum. If I wanted to write a balanced equation for that. Notice I was mean enough to give it to you all in names as opposed to formulas. Uh, just remember, you do have to be able to write the formulas all year long. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my lithium, and it's telling me that it's in its solid state. So I'm going to put an S for solid there, and then aluminum chloride. Remember, aluminum is the plus 3 ion, and so my formula is AlCl3, and it says it's a solution. So I'm going to use Aq for aqueous. And then it says those two reactants are going to form the products of a solution of lithium chloride. Again, it's a solution. And then some solid aluminum. So what I've done right here is I've written what I guess we could call a skeleton equation. It's just the formula of the reactants and the formulas of the products. But right now what we've done is, in essence, we've broken the law of conservation of matter. You'll notice I started with three chlorines on the reactant side, yet I only have two on the product side. So what we need to do is we need to put coefficients in front of any formulas that we need to get a balanced equation to get the same number of atoms of each type on both sides of the equation. So again, notice I said the only thing we're allowed to do is to put coefficients in front of any formula. You can never change a subscript or add a subscript because then what you're doing is you're actually changing the, uh, the substance there. So when I look at this just real quick, I notice that I have one lithium over here on the reactant side and I've got one lithium on the product side. I've got one aluminum on the reactant side and one aluminum on the product side. So actually, things are looking pretty good in terms of balancing. It's the chlorines, however, Notice that I have three chlorines on the reactant, but only one on the product. So what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a coefficient of three in front of that. That gives me three of the chloride ions. However, it, it also gives me three lithiums. So then what I need to do is I need to throw a coefficient of three in front of the lithium. Now I've got myself a balanced equation. Let's go ahead and let's look at this next one. I've got a solution of calcium nitrate, and I'm mixing it with a solution of sodium phosphate. Two products are going to form there, calcium phosphate and sodium nitrate. Let's go ahead and write a balanced equation for that. So I'm going to start with my calcium nitrate. And again, it tells me that it's a solution, so I need to include the AQ to indicate its state of matter. It's dissolved in water and I'm mixing it with sodium phosphate. Again, another solution. And it tells me I have two products. One is calcium phosphate. And notice on the calcium phosphate, it says that it's a precipitate. That means it's a solid that is formed when I mix those two reactants together. And then I also have my sodium nitrate solution. So when I go ahead and look at this one to start balancing, I got a mess load of oxygens in here. And trying to count up all the ones I have on the reactant side versus the product side is maybe going to get a little bit complicated. So just a hint that I'm going to give you that you could try if you would like, and that is, is um, looking at your polyatomic ions as entire units that can be inventoried. Um, and the only time you can do this is if the only place you see the nitrate or the nitrogen and oxygen together on one side, you see the exact same thing on the other side. So I've got two nitrates in the calcium nitrate, I've got one nitrate in the sodium nitrate. And then I also notice that my other oxygens are a part of phosphate, and again what I have here is I have two phosphates on the product side, one phosphate on the reactant side. So as far as I'm concerned, it makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and balance if you think about them as entire polyatomic ions. So again, following the same pattern, I'm only allowed to put coefficients to balance, and I notice right away that I've got the one calcium on the reactant side, but three on the product side. 
So I'll go ahead and I'm going to throw a 3 in front of the calcium nitrate. Now notice what happened here is that there are two nitrates in my calcium nitrate, but I now have three of them. So what I've got here is I actually have six nitrates. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that on the other side over here, put a six in front of there. That, of course, gives me six sodiums as well as six nitrates. So to get my, net, my sodiums on the reactant side to be six, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw a two in front of there. Now what that gives me is it gives me six sodiums, but it gives me two phosphates. Hey, that's a great thing, because what I have on the product side is two phosphates. Always stop and do a double check. Make sure that you really do have the same number and type of atoms on both sides. So again, three calciums, three calciums. Six nitrates, three and two gives me that six nitrates, gives me my six nitrates, six sodiums, six sodiums two of my phosphates and two of my phosphates. So just another hint to kind of think. Uh, now let's go ahead and let's look at this last one. I've got carbon tetrahydride. That's actually known as methane. It burns in the presence of oxygen. Carbon dioxide and water vapor are the products. So I'm going to start with my methane. Oops. Methane is what uh, actually comes out of our Bunsen burners. Uh, so methane is a gas, so we're going to go ahead and retain uh, the states of matter. Burns in the presence of oxygen. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that oxygen is one of our elements that exists in the diatomic state. And then what I make is I make some carbon dioxide. Hope you know that uh, carbon dioxide is a gas. And then it actually also makes water vapor. It makes water in the gaseous state. I think you guys probably know it doesn't make liquid water. When we light our Bunsen burners, we don't have water dripping down. So it's the heat energy in there that causes that water to go to the vapor state. So when I start looking at this one, you know, a hint I might give you on this one is let's start by balancing anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. I'm going to go ahead and balance my carbons first, oh, which is easy enough because I have one on each side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my hydrogens and then my oxygens. So again, start with your non-H's and O's, then move on to your hydrogen, then your oxygen. The reason why I put oxygen last is because I notice on the product side, I've got oxygen hanging out in two different formulas, and I, and I, and, and I know that that's going to be harder to balance, because um, if, if I change the coefficient of one, it changes the oxygen, then I change a coefficient of another, it changes the oxygen. So I'm going to leave that one for last to see if, that, uh, if that's going to make it easier for me. So again, starting with carbons, they're balanced. Then what I need to do is I need to go to my hydrogens, and I notice I have four hydrogens on the reactant side. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a two in front of the water. That gives me four hydrogens. So now all I need to do is balance my oxygens. I've got two oxygens in the water, but I also have two oxygens in the carbon dioxide. It gives me four oxygens. So, oops, sorry about that. I don't need a four in front of there because it's O2. So if I put a 2, a coefficient of 2 in front of the oxygen, then I now have my 4 oxygens. 